how to build a pallet wall like this. It's cost efficient, free in some, some sense if you have the paint already. I'm going to show you. Stick around. Redneck Designs. Today we're taking some old pallet wood that we got for free and we're going to turn it into a pallet wall. Right now we're going to stain the wood black. But you can use whatever stain you prefer. I just prefer black because the contrast between the black and the teal we're going to put over the top is awesome. So first of all we're just going to slap some stain here. We're going to rub it all in. Once it's saturated into the wood, we're gonna take just an old rag. I'm using old t-shirts that I was gonna throw away anyways. And we just dry it off. I'm gonna do the whole board to where it looks just like this one. We're gonna let it dry for a day and then I'll show you what we do next. Next step after you've got the stain on and it's set overnight, we're going to use some wood glue I've heard you can use Elmer's glue as well. I haven't ever tried it. I don't know which one's cheaper either. It might be cheaper to do the Elmer's glue. But we're gonna use some old Gorilla Glue I had here in the shop already. So we'll open it up. And we're just gonna run, I just run about just a quick little zigzag pattern across it. You wanna make sure there's enough to coat it real lightly. Take your brush, like an old paintbrush. I'd use an old one, you can throw it away. And then we're just going to brush this glue on there. Once you got the whole board covered, just the front, because this is all that's going to be seen on your wall. I'm going to kind of do some little brush stroke patterns here, because I think it might help with the, the, the way it breaks apart later. So we're going to let this set for about 30 minutes or so. What we're waiting for, it depends on the weather and the, and the temperature is we're wanting it to be tacky, but we don't want it to be sopping wet. We want it to where we can put a paint over the top and we're not gonna be, you know, mixing it with just wet glue. So it needs to be tacky to where the glue will just set right on top. About 30 minutes, this is now tacky. Um, it could go a little longer if I needed to because it, it does come off on my finger, but it does, it's still pretty tacky. So if I just do a light brushing over it, it should be all right. I want it to have that where it's wet and when it dries, it dries faster than the paint. And when glue dries faster than the paint, it pulls and that's what makes the paint crack. So this is a uh, teal. You can show it. This is a teal that I had just custom mixed up at Home Depot. And uh, just a teal that was matching a lot of the old fashioned photos I had seen where they had used like a teal paint. I really liked it. So with the black stain and then the crack, it'll have a really good contrast. So I'm going to put it on pretty heavy. So, all right, here we go. Like I said, put it on there pretty decent. You're only going to do one coat. So you want to put it on there where it covers in one coat. You don't want to push too hard, you just kind of let it drag across. Okay, just gonna lightly touch it. There we go. All right, now we'll keep that, keep it rolling here. I'm gonna. This is something optional, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna heat it so it'll dry fast and cause it to crack more. I believe if you set them out in the sunlight, they'll do the same thing. But um, you can use a heat gun. I'm using my wife's old hair dryer because we already had it, so. <laughs> you know, it's free. And apparently, if I need it, the deal.
All right, it's starting to do its thing. We're gonna let her keep keep on drying for about another 30, 45 minutes. And I'll come back and look at it, and it should have a lot more cracks, but they're already starting. It doesn't take very long. And uh, I only put the heat on there to give it a quick start, and uh, now I'm gonna let her finish on out. Sometimes whenever you put heat on it, it'll it'll pull apart real, real nice. But uh, they're not always real consistent, but that makes it better in my opinion, where they're more they're more artistic and more natural looking. So anyway, we'll let that dry and we'll be right back. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the cracks are looking good. It looks weathered like it's been out for a while. I do one more step. You don't have to, it's optional. You, this is all about how you prefer your wood to look. There's a lot of weather cracks here, but to, to make them look even more distressed, sometimes I'll take a scraper and I'll lightly scrape some of the paint off, make it look old. You can use a scraper like this, or if you want to go fast and you got a lot of them, sometimes you just take an old grinder. It's going to be loud. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some gloves on too, but we're gonna do it just now. Oh, I do. I just want to look like I pulled it off some old building somewhere. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can use whatever color of paint you want. You can use whatever color of stain you want to go underneath. Really, just have fun with it. Be creative, and uh, if you guys like the video, please like, and please subscribe to my channel, because I'm trying to grow my channel so I can make more videos just like this. I do a lot of airbrushing, uh, custom automotive painting, and I, I do a little bit of everything. I like artsy, crafty type stuff. And uh, I can show you guys a lot of tricks that I've learned over the years of just playing around. And, this is what I like to do, so if you would be so kind to subscribe and we'll uh, make a lot more videos for you guys and I'll teach you guys everything that I know and maybe you guys can teach me some stuff that I didn't think of and give me good ideas and content to use for later on. Thanks. Like and subscribe.